What's up, long players? Welcome to the Long Play Listening Party, the show where we go deep on local music, writing, recording, inspiration, gear, and whatever else sounds good to us. I'm Howie Howard from Mr. Furious Records. Part two with Nesbeat. Whole crew is here. Nate, how you feeling? Good. How are you? All right. Royce Diamond, it's a cold day in Kansas City. I am in the building. Warm and <laughs> Glad cozy. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Nesbeat, welcome back from San Francisco. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure to be here with y'all. And welcome Jarrett Fulton from Texas, uh, who had a role in the music we heard last week and the music we're going to hear this week. How's it going, Jarrett? Great, man. Blessed to be with you guys. Yes, sir. Uh, so maybe Nez, uh, start us off. This is part two of a whole set of music that you made uh, with some of these guys about 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah, about that. Um, we we just we were in one of those phases where it was just like experimenting with the studio that that Jared had just kind of started renting and renovating and uh, getting all the gear and. We were just like going, going wild, you know, up there in mixtape studios, just recorded as much as we could while we were there. I think we, I think we, uh, I think we made a dent in the music scene with that place. <laughs> Cause I mean, we were oh, recording sure. all these, we were recording all those songs and Jarrett was doing a bunch of other sessions, like with the rooftop vigilantes and all these other bands. And, uh, and somehow we still recorded these two. This was all just like, the same recording vibe we had going that i guess it was like a year that probably took we took we recorded all these songs and uh yeah like mid 2000s and these are the two albums that came out of it so i'm pretty stoked on it <laughs> finally getting it out there Jarrett, maybe tell us about that space both you know kind of physically yeah. you know and the gear and stuff and also you know what was going on in your life musically what inspired you to set it up what were you hoping to accomplish and, and how do you feel about it? Well, uh, I have nothing but fond memories about that place. Uh, I mean, it was built with the, uh, intention with a, you know, just a full heart to help people, peers, my, you know, my friends, the Lawrence scene, the KC scene, the Midwest, the Midwest scene in general to have a place just to, uh, to feel free to create and be inspired. And it was just really like an incubator of love and, and light and creation. And that's what it was all about from the get go. Uh, it was originally, um, Mercy recording, a recording studio. Uh, it was like an ADAT Mackie board kind of system back in the day. It was right next to the uh, bottleneck. And so my band, DJ, not a DJ, we moved into that spot all together as a band to live there in like 2000, 2002 or three. Mm. And then, then we finally had like the idea to go ahead and make it a studio in like 2004. And so, uh, it became like a family investment. My parents helped me put that together and we just started getting the gear that we needed for the place. Uh, I found an engineer who knew a lot more than me to help me get it off the ground. Cause, um, I was still learning as I went, but I knew that, I knew that Lawrence needed a place with some proper gear that could be affordable. But it would also be like a place for all of us to come together and all of the projects and all the bands I was working with at the time, too. Um, so I have nothing but fond memories of that place. Lots of lots of music was made. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Hell yeah. So can you describe um, the room, the space, like... Uh, absolutely. Gear? Absolutely. So when we took over, when we took it over... Um, we put in a Trident 70 board, um, a Series B. It was like mm -hmm. 24, 24 channels or so. And that came from the studio in Lawrence as well. Um, that was Joe Comparato's old board, if I, if I remember correctly, who ended up owning that SSL studio. Um, Nate, I think that was on Mass Street at Daybreak Studio. He ended up turning yes, that into the that's, SSL. That's room. right. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think you got that board over by, um, it was in East Lawrence. Yeah, his studio exactly. East Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, we got a really good deal on it. I mean, it needed a ton of work, so we found a tech. Thank God that was in the Midwest <laughs> that could service it because uh, I went on like a year long spree finding parts for that board, bring it back to life, and to uh, to suss it up a little bit. Um, I had some A range pre's in it, but mostly it was a B board. But it sounded beautiful, all analog. Um, and we decided mm -hmm. to we decided it should be a Pro Tools room. I had just got my Pro Tools degree, and all of us were, had 
002s and 001s and we from we were we were familiar <laughs> we so we talking took that, about that earlier yeah first, yeah first yeah run rig. <laughs> i mean that's that's <laughs> um, i'll never forget like going through this huge dj shadow phase and saving up and getting a uh uh you know an npc and then we were making that album nate uh, our first record with dj and i dj and mike had that 001 and so yeah. I, so i put yeah, it back that's right i that's took right. it back <laughs> uh, and uh, that was years before that. Uh, sorry, the music that just started over here. Let me turn that down. Um, so yeah, so we went HD Pro Tools and had some Apogee converters and got some nice Whoa. mics and uh, mm. outboard gear, and mm -hmm. we just got that got the studio up and running and started hey, making albums yeah. right out the gate. Right out the gate. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a beautiful room. I mean, we did some acoustic treatments in that place as well, and. Uh, had it all hand wired with uh, Ben Jackson, who was just a genius. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was man. like a, it's like a hundred channel TT uh, patch bay. I mean, point <laughs> to point. I mean, it took like three months just to wire it all together. That is crazy. That is that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, we went all in on it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, as soon as soon as mics were live, that that place was barely ever quiet after that. <laughs> oh, that it sounds like that was the whole there. idea. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, uh, that was a good space, man. Like, you had that, the giant main room, like the drum room, and that, that was where we recorded a lot of these. Drums. So yeah, like, like Josh, uh, this is Josh, the, Josh Adams on the on the drums we recorded. It yeah, like I was just gonna ask about uh, the drums because a, a lot of the drums on the on the last one we listened to um, were live drums that I assume yeah, that you you played a lot of as well. Uh, on this album, um, yeah. Um, yeah, he did. Him and Dash did most of the live yeah. drums. Yeah. Um, this, that's right. That's this right. Is, this is the one song that we had Josh Adams on. He was just available, and he's, you know, he's like yeah. the most insane drummer. So I was, I was, well, he has like that, that jazz flutter, and I really wanted like a soft touch on this song and he was down so yeah he did a bunch of takes i'm glad we, like this one he plays through the whole song really like uh, a lot of he had a lot of like fluttery brush work going on on this one but, and then ryan's on guitar but I, I wrote it all just like on the piano do you uh so nez when we were making this album we were always making it in between other projects i had going on so when the room was you know, when the room was free, I'd be like, Nez, get over here, let's keep working on it. And so this is yeah. when we were working on the Andrew Morgan record. Mm -hmm. And that's why Andrew's that's why Andrew's singing on this track, because we already had Josh in the other room doing drums. And uh, uh, yeah. I, just, I just loved how that all came together, because, you know, yeah, we, yeah. Were just, we were just sitting around mixing Andrew's record. I'm like, hey, check yeah, out this Nez track. I didn't even realize. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. He this is the one he's on too, Andrew yeah. Morgan. What's up? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's what, he's that, back. I think he's back in Lawrence. I think. He is. Yeah, I think he, he is. Cool. Yeah, we just talked the other day. Years, yeah, he's doing well. He's a music attorney now. Wow. Oh wow! That's yeah, amazing. you guys should hit him up, man. <laughs> he's he's a brilliant genius, and he's still turning out yeah. some of the best music I've heard. He has a new <laughs> project called Leon. Uh, mm -hmm. L Y O N. Yeah, just, just magical stuff. I mean, some of the best stuff I've cool. ever heard. It's just waiting. I'm just waiting for Wes Anderson to, to just take those albums and just score the rest of his movies with these records. So you have amazing. to think that's that's like on the horizon. It should. Oh, I hope. Right. If not already, I mean, it should yeah. be already. <laughs> but I will say that was the beauty of that space, uh, Howie, is that we were all friends no matter what projects were going on and they would always seem to overlap like another artist from one yeah. session would like immediately jump on another and it was just one whole uh musical playground <laughs> just so much creative collaboration and that's what was so beautiful about that space is everyone was rooting for each other lifting each other up yeah. and helping each other and playing with on each other's albums it, it, just ne it never stopped yeah. it was very exciting that way yeah this one is the same i mean every song on here is a, a, it's uh it's like all part of that family vibe like it was like the first one we did where it was like we could whoever we could get on it we would just be like play whatever what do we have in here like 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 you know this one's got the fourth of july guys on it um patrick hangout patrick hangout is playing i just had this sample chopped up bass line that he played over played it just mocked it and then so he learned that, and then uh, Bronco from Fourth of July is playing drums on this one. And 
I'm really glad because they were in, they were up there. Those 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 were the homies, like all the hang hours and and like Dre and all those guys were all in bands together. So that was another just like sick ass band from Lawrence history that we got on this record. <laughs> it's just like oh Fourth of July's in in the studio. <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's get them on something, you know. <laughs> so that was cool. And that's what's so cool uh, about your record, Nez. It's like. Uh, it's such a unique album that so many people from so many styles of music would hear it and say, whoa, what is that? Can I get on that record? And uh, I think that's a testament <laughs> I think that's a testament to your work on this record, man. It's just, I really can't quantify it or categorize it. I still can't. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. It was just, it was just like a, a vibe. I think it captured Lauren's vibe at the time. Like, at first, that's kind of what I was going for. Like, just like that family kind of like love that I honestly haven't felt since you know I haven't had like a community like that and maybe never will we were super lucky and we definitely like capitalized on it with these two albums and all the other records that we were recording up there I mean we, we definitely went went ham dude we recorded like <laughs> I personally recorded like three or four albums up there <laughs> and then whatever else we did shit was fucking ridiculous I mean, I, I was thinking about that tonight, tonight like Nate, uh, uh, Nate and Nez, like I, I feel like we've probably been in like 15 different projects together at some point, it seems like 10 or 15 different huh. albums or, or live bands or gigs or shows or something. Well, I, I remember playing on a lot of different Perfect. things, just, you know, whatever. Here's his synth, play, yeah. play these, you know, yeah. Yeah. play some something. Uh, it was definitely really cool. Oh, you know who else was on this song was uh, Oscar from Oscar from the uh, rooftop vigilante. That's right. Is, is, he plays the ebo at the end, like it comes in all epic and it sounds like like an orchestra, but it's just our friend who's a sick ass guitar player, singer. He like had your ebo like electric thing on some crazy ass guitar. He was, and I just was like, dude, just like emote whatever i don't care and he just like he made this like orchestral fuck like kind of like shit that went with my vocal harmonies it was it added so much i was just like damn yeah i want to get him on more shit <laughs> like, this is this sick. is the actual evo right here <laughs> oh you have it dude yeah sick. I, I love that you you are wicked on that thing man <laughs> thanks man <laughs> That's a cool. That's a cool tool. But uh, yeah, this is the part. Like Fourth of July was just going off, and then like, uh, oh wait, yeah, it's like towards the end when when Oscar comes in. But yeah, this shit's fucking. This is like the title track. It's like one of the more epic ones. Um, but his the thing I was listening to it on the monitors earlier, and I was like, Bronco's drums were so boomy. Like that's. I could not. I could not say anything about any of the other mixes we did, but these drums sometimes on different systems, I'm like, they kind of take away from some of the bass shit we were doing. But I, I like the rawness of it. Though I, I think it encapsulates like what I was feeling at the time. But now I, you know, you always have like different perspectives later. But I think it captured what we were going for at the time. But some of the lyrics are kind of like drowned out from the drum boom, but what the, whatever. That's just how it goes sometimes. <laughs> it's fucking so I kind of want to know about that, that rock sound. and roll. Like, that was, I, that 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 was a um, crushed out distressor, all nuked out. Okay. Yeah, the drum sounds, they, they bang. And on your system, with the, with the sub, dude, this song, <laughs> this song was just like, Fucking yeah. huge. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, yeah. This is one of the more fun because it changes so many times. Like we had so much fun. Just like, all right, who else can we get on this shit? Like, let's make it like as big as we possibly can. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. Let's let it. Uh, let's let it play out and let people hear it. Yeah. That's 
Patrick was like, are we, he's like on the bass, like, <laughs> like when does it end? Like we rocked that for so long, but, but that was a fun song to piece together. Absolutely. <laughs> You guys have any technical issues putting that together or any of these tr- songs together in that HD system? I'm sure. Uh, I do remember quite a bit of editing, but um, more, more, more like sound design and stuff like that. Like a lot of the takes were just, um, yeah, a lot of the, t- yeah, a lot of the takes were just like played all the way through. If I remember, that song sp- specifically, he, he definitely had to like. It's a hard ass bass line to play. Like I remember Patrick like being and he's a sick ass bass bassist, but it was like this weird it was like a weird thing with like the offbeatness of the samples. Like so we had to do that a lot and find like the specific like sickest loop. But I think for the most part he like he, yeah, he just learned it and then we got it eventually. But um like this song was another one where it was like Jared, like I had this beat that I made with uh, my friend Dustin and Jarrett had this drum idea that this was like my favorite drums on the record I think just the way it goes from like this chill live break to like these crazy ass it like melds like electronic and, and live drums perfectly I think with this one this was like I thought our, my favorite maybe yours too as far as the drums like they meld it and like you can't tell what's electronic and what's live that was like the goal you know it was like oh, it was like it was some very much like kind of like in rainbows type of shit we were pulling off there yeah <laughs> that's funny you say that I was thinking amnesiac when I was playing those drums <laughs> uh, yeah I, yeah I mean, it's I funny you say that a, this is around this is, yeah I guess this was around that time when they dropped in rainbows so, 2000 when was that 2005 or some shit 2008 I think uh, was that 2008 yeah. I think so 2007 or 8? Yeah, but yeah, we were definitely on that. We were like always blasting those guys. Their, their drum shit is out of this world, you know? <laughs> it's like the programming and then the and then the two live drummers. Like, But you nailed that shit, dude. Like, I, my favorite part is when it goes into this shit, the distorted shit, and then you, you, you drop that crazy ass beat over my beat, and it's like, but this is all like reason shit, right? Weren't we using reason? Um, probably at that time, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun little program. I, I need, I need to get a new one, a new version of it. <laughs> Nate, you play on this song too, I think. I'm glad you yeah, said that. that. That's you playing all the dark ass like radio heady chords. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Really? I thought Nate was on this track. Yeah, yeah. You, you play on this shit too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not remember this at all? And yeah, it was very much like a. I wish I wish I remembered this because I would love to to be like, yeah, this is what I did. Or or I I don't mean, did you guys? mess with like did I just play stuff and you guys no like, you played this no line. you were in the control room yeah he was in the control was room wasn't he yeah on the roads yeah yeah on the yeah. Li- on the oh okay okay remember okay. Nate it was on the top of the outboard gear and you were just in the yeah, control yeah, yeah. room with us yeah well the road stuff makes sense that is my favorite drum part though and then it like breaks down So there's a mixture of live and electronic drums. Yeah. It keeps switching like every four bars, like the beat changes. This is my favorite one that boom ka bit boom boom ka bit boom boom. I like the way it ends. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember this, yeah. I like the way you edit this last part, dude. It's crazy. Let's do it. So, Jared, uh, how long has it been since you heard this material? And did you know that Nate was getting, excuse me, that Nez was getting ready to release it? Um, well, when we started making this record, 
Uh, I mean, it was in between. Um, we were doing Blackout Gorgeous stuff, and Nez, I think you just finished Good Hair. I mean, like, you just kept bringing up all these extra tracks. And then I think after a conversation, I felt like you had, like, a double album's worth here. And I, isn't that right, Nez? And you're like, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Just, let's just go ahead and make this a double album. So I think the plan was, it's like, I mean, it felt pretty finished. We finished it up, right? You didn't do too much yeah, after that, right? Fit. Nah, I mean, just just some ed- little tiny edits. Like, I took what we, s- w- I took all our stereo balances and an- analyzed it like a million times. And I was so happy with, with your final, like, bounce, you know, we bounced all that shit down and even, like, kind of mastered it. Like, it sounded sick how we left it, like, 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah. I did, like, I did, like, one little harmony on one of these songs that I was like, that's what I was missing. I did like, and I like, I kind of like weaved it in there on the stereo track nice, and dude. then like, and then like rebounced it. I think it's on this album, but um, I'll, I'll, think, I'll hear it when I hear it, but uh, this is a fun one. This is Ryan on guitar and uh, Dash, Dash on drums, like nice. playing along with, with the program drums. But, yeah, these were all just beats I had. I was like, well, I don't think we're gonna use it for Blackout Gorgeous. So I just, you know, I just started singing to shit. Like I was going through some rough breakup shit and I was like, fuck it, you know, we'll just make some weird shit. <laughs> like experiment with the drum room. That was basically, it was like, <laughs> we gotta figure out these mics and like this room. So that's what we were doing. We were like, how can we freak this? Like, how, how can we record these drums? Like these drums were all room mic'd, I think. And just dash, like, like losing his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> we might have talked about it on, on uh, last uh, last week, but when you were singing, or when you had, you know, like, did you have these lyrics written out, like, or were you kind of like, yeah. writing the songs as as you wrote? I had the no, nah, I would def- I definitely had written all the all the lyrics, all the melodies were kind of like I'm still like I experimented a lot at home with a lot of these recordings and. Some of the vocals are just what I did at home, and some I did at the at mixtape. But um, but yeah, I I wrote them all and then brought them like to this to Jarrett, you know, with like a pretty much like like pretty much like solid idea as a song, and then we would like embellish it and like just add instruments and shit. But it's the first but, yeah, time you really like, sang on any of your. I mean, yeah, as far as just getting into vocalizing like, like that, like I was definitely always like into singing. I, I knew I had a good voice, but I hadn't really expressed it much except for like on archetype like hooks, you know? Like, yeah. I sung, like and Isaac was really the one that gave me like the confidence because he would sing and I was like, he's killing it. You know, like he could just <laughs> naturally, he could naturally go in between his rap voice and his singing voice without any it was like amazing and that and when you know like coming from just growing up with him to see that progression I was like, kind of like following in his footsteps really it was just like damn plus like yeah like playing with blackout gorgeous really helped me get the confidence but but this was really like my time that I was finding my singing voice I hadn't really yeah. sung sung you know like I've just done like little shit but it was fun as hell, man. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good, man. Yeah, Howie, I hadn't he- I hadn't heard this record in like a year or so. It's good to hear it again. Yeah, Dash goes off here for in a second. It's fucking insane. Hitting the snare that many times, and also the hi hat shit. It's all one take. It's like, uh, how many hands do you have, dude? <laughs> you know, he's like, he's hitting the hi hat in these weird ass fucking patterns while he's doing that. Woo! Listen Crazy. to that. That snare work is bonkers. Keeping the the hi hat flowing. Yeah, and remember that we added that distortion by reamping all the drums out through a uh, through a couple different amps into the live room. Okay. Oh uh, shit. You know, yeah, we just we just I would molted not have that out. That. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's just cool. This how big was that space? Your 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 drum space? How big was that? Oh gosh, the tracking room had three yeah, different ice. Dang. Yeah, it had three different ISO rooms in it, and then a studio behind. Remember the little B room, guys? That was behind yeah. the main tracking room. So that was like, I don't know, guys. What do you, Nate? What do you think? Like five five hundred square feet just for the tracking room, and then. That was a big ass room. Yeah, it was big. Yeah, yeah it was big. I don't know how big it was, but that it was like basically the whole back half of, or back like yeah. third of the building. Yep, yep. And then you had that little mini gear room back there, but, um, but the drum room itself was was like a corner of the room, like the way you had it. Was yeah, nice. that was the that was the second ISO room, and it could fit a kit, and I liked it in there. Yeah, but we had cool. opened the doors so so we could get the verb from the big room. Yeah, the big room was the shit. Dude. That's where we would like do all our rehearsals and shit. That place was. Sick. It sounded so good in there. This is probably one of my top three tracks on the album right here. I think oh, this yeah. is such a unique song, guys. This was the first one I wrote for any of this shit. That's it. I mean, this has pedal steel on it and blown out drums and reverse and sound design and like uh, hooks yeah. like. I just I love know. this track, brother. It's yeah, this was a fun one. It kept changing. I bet there's like a hundred versions of this song, but I bet I think this is I think this is the one. <laughs> but yeah, Jeff Jackson plays pedal steel on it. I got to hang out with him this fall, like when all the Cali fires were happening. I went went back to Lawrence and I stayed with his family. My my ex my ex's sister and him are married and have a family so i'm kind of like i'm i'm family with this guy pretty much <laughs> like lawrence he's lawrence family but at then he was just like i think they were like dating and that's how i like i just knew him as a sick guitar player and now they have kids and stuff but Holstein. yeah I, I when i dropped this i sent it to him and he was like what like i don't even remember doing yeah. shit. <laughs> i was like yeah dude you're on like two or three songs <laughs> but yeah this is a fucking cool song i, I love this track man. i love this part this is a very much like this is kind of like our ode to uh, i was like Point kind of like that whole like Oklahoma City. I mean, my main mixing uh, inspiration for this album uh, was probably Cloud's Taste Metallic. I don't know if I ever told you that, Nez. So, uh, Cloud's Taste Metallic. Yeah, that was probably my like main mixing inspiration when I was doing this record, or when we were doing this record. I was just thinking, how can I, how can I channel my inner Dave Fridman? I mean, it's probably one of my favorite Flaming Lips records. But there's just something about the sonic textures of that album that I was trying to, uh, you know, do our own yeah. style as well. But that was kind of what my yeah. jump-off point. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, but all the all those early Flaming Lips albums were very much for me a bit a big inspiration for all this shit. Like that was like the soft you play drums on this kind of This is Jarrett and Dash Dash plays bass I think and you play drums. But yeah Dash this was like later. This was just dr drums. Jarrett on drums and Ryan on or Jeff Jackson on guitar. I think Ryan plays guitar on it too maybe but um Anyway, the later Dash put his bass on it, and I was like, yeah, it was definitely missing. But there's no bass line up until it goes like ham, and then like he comes in. <laughs> it was just like a little like walking bass line. But this was a, this, this lyric was like, if I could black out gorgeous, it was just a tribute to that, our band, you know? Like it was like, if I could black out gorgeous, which is like, kind of like, 
that band was on the rocks and I was writing all this shit and I was just like, I want to have like a little like memento to that band. So I thought about that, that name of a band, like what it meant. And I was like, I just want to black this person out of my mind. So I was like, if I could black, if I could black out gorgeous, that'd be great. You know? <laughs> like, uh, but, but yeah, anyway, that's, that, that's one of the first ones that I wrote. That's when I was like, I was like learning how to vocalize, like singing, and just like, oh shit, like I can actually like, I can make it sound cool, like recording. I still haven't figured out how to do it live yet, really, but <laughs> that's that's what this pandemic's for. I'm trying to like figure out how to. There you go. I, you know, I don't sing like at the top of my lungs or anything. I really do need like inner in inner ear like monitoring to pull this kind of stuff off. But this one's great too. This is a uh, never stop exploding. Yeah, never stop exploding. Yeah, uh, who's on this song? This is one of those like trippy love songs that I just wanted to capture a vibe. I didn't care if like the lyrics really hit. I just wanted like to be like one of those like you wake up next year like love her and like realize how awesome shit is like that was the vibe i wanted and and then we were recording a lot with um justin roloff at the time because he was like uh he had like him and the get up or not the get up kids the anniversary had broken up and he was doing all this psychedelic kind of like lyrical trippy ass shit and i i was thoroughly impressed by his album and i was i was like hanging out with him a lot and doing all the psychedelics and he was at my house mixing some live show that he was gonna do for his release and i got him on this song because he was just at my house all the time mixing and shit so like he was basically like living in my studio and i just like let him have it like he's such, a, he's such an inspiration i was like dude you can spend as much time as you want in my bedroom studio like i'll fucking sleep on the couch like let me know if you need any help whatever and, that's cool uh, you know, i didn't know that like, yeah, he's a whiz, and so I just let him, he had like, I let him like do his thing for like three to five days. I don't know how long, he spent a lot of time mixing this live live set that was like, a lot of a lot of it was like beats and shit, so he had like, you know, like we would do, he had like pre-recorded beats and blah, 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 and I was like, this is, he really liked this song, so he ended up singing, I think this is the part. Was this when he was doing the white flight ratatat stuff? Yeah, this was like before, kind of before, before the ratatat shit. Like during the white, just the white flight album, which was the first record, and the second record had ratatat on it. Oh, okay, that's right, that's right. The first one, like him and the Hangouts and those, those all those Range Life kids did all themselves, you know. And uh, and uh, yeah, he was just around, so we got him. Got him on that. He was on that last part. So this is my favorite part of the song. It's, it's a very like autumn. It's supposed to feel like everything's dying. <laughs> <laughs> Jared or Dash on those drums. Do you remember Jared? It was like, it was it was both of us because we set up. I was really into the liars at that time, and so I really liked their live show. You know, with like the live floor toms and snares mounted up, and so <laughs> we just set up like big floor toms in the room. Dash and I were just going at it. <laughs> oh damn! Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was a fun song. Definitely adds so much to so. Mostly. So was it a. Uh approach that uh, sequenced these records yeah he's the one that put all the 
Like the arrangement of the songs is really. It's very interesting that they put with flying. I was like, I don't fucking know. It's like a bunch of songs that we did. Like, how does it go? But he was. Wait, wait, Sean. Sean sequenced the track listing. That's awesome. Yeah, I gave it all to him. He was like, I think it's two records. Like, bam, boom. Like, here's how. Oh, dude, I love that. (laughs) I, I, love I like ch- I changed it like a million times, but then I kept coming back to his arrangement, and that's that was the final. It was the first one, and the final one. Yeah, he he was like, it's two albums, these and that. And I, the only question I had was like, wait, so you put the song with flying colors? Yeah, on right. Fire control. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that yeah that <laughs> he was like not. Nah, it like it like leads into the next album. I was like, okay. Well, what if I put up? Yeah, I was like, you know what? Perplexed. After listening to that last <laughs> approach podcast, that makes sense about him talking about sequencing of his trilogy and stuff like that. That makes he's a, a great. Lot of sense. He's so good at that, and like he's good at a lot of things, but that's like a really like one of his like musical like shining points. Is like he can just take like a piece. It's amazing. He took all those songs. There's like 18 songs. There's a there's a million ways you could package that or split it up you know but you What's know the, he just has that oh mind, man what was that like this the, is the best way what was up goes. with the drums in that part oh the last part the the last part this is dash i believe uh i had all these weird like 808 like okay. originally it was just this weird beat that i had made and sung to that um I sequenced when I when I like when I quantized this shit. It was like all off beat, and I was like, okay. "Fuck, that sounds sick," you know. <laughs> so like I just yeah, kept, right. just kept awesome. it like that. I never that really is a great part. Never fixed it, and then had Dash would just go the fuck off. Like he's playing all these like off sixteenth notes, you know. And it was just based on this weird quantization of the. Of the but that it's main part cool, where he's just like he goes off yeah. in the middle is yeah. so crazy. We, I think I don't remember how we mic that shit. I love that sound though. It's just like it the room. A, yeah. The room is. That just was like, the uh, that Elam 151, just that big room mic, kind of like a Telefunken style mic. Mm. Probably th- probably through the distressor again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was our that was our trick. <laughs> Yeah, it usually went into the API, into the distressor, or sometimes just straight. Or maybe sometimes to the UA, but yeah. That mic and the distressor we used quite a bit. <laughs> it matches so well with the 808s and shit. It's like, it's weird. It like brings this whole new le- layer of washy. Like, it's supposed to feel like a dream, you know? It's, it's all about... Yeah, like, well, you want the 808 like, to be huge and round and everything else to kind yeah. of like balance well with it, of course. Right. Yeah. So it was, this was. A, I've never been able to. Like, I still can't do what we did on this record. Like, all that we had at our disposal. Like, it was like, dude. You, like, we had the perfect space for like what the fuck we pulled off on this record. Like, I would never be able to do that now. Like, this like might have, be my favorite track. Oh yeah, this is one of mine too. Off this record for sure. I was bumping this shit earlier. I love this song, man. Oh my god. Props to Approach for letting it close out this record. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we were done tracking this, we we probably like, I think we hugged for like a minute and a half, like two straight minutes. <laughs> it's just pure joy. We were so happy when this song was done and we just loved it. Yeah, that shit. You come in right here when the drums drop with the gu- with the guitar, or was it a bass? I don't remember. I, that's a uh, my uh, or, my uh, or not here, distorted but bass. Shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Distorted bass line. That shit's crazy. We just chopped it like you had. I think he just went off, and then we just chopped like four bars. That's of my, it, or, my like, bass or debut. Two, <laughs> it was just a two-bar loop. We're like, that's the shit. Fucking so loop it. <laughs> it really picks Man, up. Your voice that sounds too so good on this song. Oh, this is the part.
love that keyboard that a, sound. Yeah, what is that? That's kind of like genesis -y or something. Yeah, I mean, I almost thought it was a guitar. That's a AS, or that's, yeah, that's a ASR-10 sound. Huh. Those guys' sound design was so on point. Well, Ryan's playing guitar with it, too, so it's like, it's like the ASR-10 with the, uh, an acoustic. Yeah, this is some sweet-ass chords. I love your background vocals, Nez. This is one of the last songs I wrote, too. I remember I was like, it's a, it's a fitting, like, last song. <laughs> Those drums, dude. This is like a sign off for any album, or it was it was like a sign off for our relationship. <laughs> it's like <laughs> love always, peace. <laughs> <laughs> I used I used so many backward that was just based off this backwards guitar sample from some weird like jam jam like some fucking Grateful Dead shit or something <laughs> that I had chopped up and then but that was fun doing a lot of backwards samples that was kind of like one of the little themes throughout those songs because I was he's we were just fucking around with a lot of that kind of shit like what if we learn like that David Lynch shit where you like learn it forward and then sing it and then learn it, like flip it around and you know whatever like chop it up like it's so fun dude that was sick <laughs> love it yeah. yeah dude thanks for having us that that was a that was a trip through memory lane for sure absolutely oh my gosh but yeah, that song, I remember you were like, this is the one. Like, you were like, this <laughs> shit. This is it. I, I'm feeling that right now. Honestly, I just got some goosebumps to be totally honest with you. You were oh, playing man. the drums? That's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On that one, yeah. yeah. For sure. Well, I don't remember the specifics, though. What were you doing? Yeah, so some of the huge. stuff at the end was just like. It's like enormous, yeah, dude. That yeah, room, exactly. I guess you just <laughs> mic'd the room, probably. Yeah, I just knew we really wanted that end section to bloom as big as possible. And so yeah. I just remember there being lots of layers and lots of volume rides. And uh, yeah, yeah, I do remember. I do. I definitely do remember that. I got to tell you, man, I'm going to go back and listen to this because Dash is going off on some of these songs, man. <laughs> I got to go back and listen to his parts again. But Nez, I love your vocals on that album. I mean, on that last song, particularly. Like, oh, I, I, st I still can't compare that song um, to another song. That's probably in my top 100 songs of all time, man, honestly. So, <laughs> so cheers to you on that song, Brad Brother, and well, this whole album. Yeah, I, I, I was going to comment man, on... Up. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I mean, the that music means, was... That's insane. <laughs> awesome, but, like, the the vocal stuff, like, I'm... That's just cool how you just worked on it and put it yeah. together, yeah. man. And, and, and It was an emotive time in my life right. for sure like 
like you know sometimes we get stifled that was definitely not a vocally or lyrical stifling time in my life like right now i'm making like way more beats and instrumental shit and like but that time of, of our, whatever that was like that mid-20s just like vibrancy it was just like flowing through us and we had you know lucky like we had the space and the people to like really pull that pull all that shit off and i think we like nailed it you know <laughs> like for yeah. real um like yeah. i'm i'm honestly happy with the timing of when it came out because like at the time it was just like no way that's it's way too personal i'm not putting that shit out like but eventually like you relinquish it's just like okay well <laughs> put it into the universe i'm i'm not hanging on to this shit anymore you know <laughs> oh man i'm i'm yeah i'm glad you didn't hang on to it i had no idea like you had yeah. this much stuff just you're just sitting on it around. uh yeah yeah i haven't yeah. thought about that before but this is this is quite a thing to be carrying in your back pocket all this time you know and just knowing right knowing it's there and you knowing i mean a lot of well, people obviously knew that you'd been working on it and had participated in everything but uh yeah i guess it was just timing wise it wasn't really right then to put out because we were all transitioning like like j-rock was moving back to texas at the end of it all and i like we were dealing with all this archetype stuff like was archetype still going to be a band blackout had broke up too and i was in transition like when we finally finished it i was like not mm. trying to fuck with any of that shit i was like you know what yeah. like whatever I'm probably gonna move out, of, and that's you know that's right when I like moved to California. I moved here and was like, and later, like I'm not fucking with any of that shit. But then, like th through the years, I was like, that, it's so golden. Like it was such a golden era for me. It was it was just too personal at that time. But I think it's even you know it ring it rings like true. All those lyrics and vibes still I still feel 100 percent behind. So I'm glad. Eventually, I was like, I wanted oh, to put the music, it out. Like, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, it's all. It's, it's just it's, whatever. It's, it's, it's way too good. To I feel it feels too. still relevant, and that's all that matters. Like, if I didn't have my heart still behind it, I wouldn't have put it out. You know, but I think it's like some of the sickest shit we ever did. So yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for real. But well, yeah, man. We like definitely appreciate you guys coming on, man, and. Yeah, talking. About yeah, it. we gotta. I wish we could have six of us. We'd get Dash on here, but yeah, he. <laughs> it was just that crew, like the homeowner. We had a couple of remixes with Dash and Jarrett and me, and I wish that could have came. That was like the one regret. Like I was like, damn, that era. There were so many sick musicians, but like <laughs> me and Dash and and Jarrett had this like homeowner thing that we were doing, and it never really came to fruition. But it was like it was such a genius idea because you can spell it like a million ways and it always is it's always like intriguing or funny <laughs> like the way i spelled homeowner was h-o-m-o-a-n-e-r homeowner <laughs> and uh and like, <laughs> like i think like you guys all had your own spellings and shit but <laughs> i think it's still a great band name homeowner <laughs> something to think about <laughs> well, I definitely wanted to hear more about like how the sessions went, so I appreciate you bringing that to the to the fold, Jared. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you have any more questions, just let me know. I don't know if I skirted over uh, all of it. I'm trying to recall it all. Um, no, yeah, but lot. any 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 specific session or gear questions, I, I I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any like right now, like specifically? Well, I have a question on? that I've been holding on to, um, like. What was editing drums in a in a Excel, an HD Excel world like? Yeah, right. Uh, fast, uh, because we. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, what Nez was saying at the beginning is, you know, the studio had been operational for about three years at that point, and uh, we were still learning everything that we could do. And so, I mean, most drum sessions had sixteen to eighteen inputs on it. And we were just sitting there like molting different things and trying different sounds. And half the time, you know, seven of those uh, channels would be going through three different sets and layers of outboard gear. Like 
we were just trying everything. So like once I think to answer your question, Royce is like it went fast once we picked a sound that we liked. Gotcha. Uh, and then yeah. and then we could mm-hmm. edit. But m- most of the time was really just like being friends and experimenting, you know, in sound in sound, and we sound had a, design. Yeah, we had a lot of reference points with album different albums too. Absolutely. Know? I'd be Absolutely. like Absolutely. Or you'd be like, Okay, give me like five albums that you want these drums to sound like or something. And I it'd be like homework and then it'd be like, Okay, Radiohead, obviously, and then like whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure, but, absolutely. But yeah, like there was that Auto Lux band that I was bumping a lot. Like I think we nailed like that band was had the that's sickest, right big drums. I was talking yes. about that on the last one. Like and we, I think we did like reference a couple like Flaming Lips records and stuff like that too. But but yeah, like it was always like it was like fun homework. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, most of the time, Royce, we would get like you know, eighteen drum inputs down to like two stereo subgroups, and and that's that's kind of how we'd mix it. But then if you'd expand it, they'd all be there. So n- normally, right. by the time we'd mix it, we'd just hide everything, so we wouldn't even. I got have you. The, uh, so we wouldn't be tempted to open up like the whole subgroup anymore. We would collapse <laughs> it and like not even remember it's there. And like we'd turn off playlists, so we were not going through like alternate takes. Like we got to stop. <laughs> just, that, it, just let's gotcha. let's be Never disciplined ending. here. I would have never ever finished these records without without Mr. Fulton here just like, nope, that shit subgroup we're good there. Just we'll bounce it and see where <laughs> we're at. You know, like I that would it's I can't wrap my brain around that many tracks. I'm like I'm like a chop a stereo drum type of dude. <laughs> <laughs> well that that helped me too later in editing, but like most of the time Royce I feel like our sessions were like 80 to 100 track count. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, not that ev- not that every track has, you know, was full of audio the whole way through, you know, from start to, to finish. But um, there's, honestly, I like this album. I think it's a good headphone adventure. There's a lot of little Easter eggs hidden out, hid throughout these mm-hmm. mixes. And uh, I'm still really, really happy about that. Nice. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. You know, it might just be a uh, coincidence or a side. I'm not sure if it's a side effect of the pandemic or whatever, but we've ended up, now that I think about it, we've ended up having a lot of headphone records on the show. I mean, we kind of started with a headphone record, me and Nate, uh, Christina from probably two weeks ago, by the time you hear this, that was a very different kind of headphone record, but still a great, you know, headphone record. Um, Which record? uh, This is Christina Graves. So, uh, we all mm-hmm. were recording this on February 11th, tonight at midnight. Uh, Christina Graves' album, Finding My Footing, comes out. And we recorded an episode with her. It'll be out uh, next week, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, okay, by the time cool. everybody uh, out there in internet land is hearing my voice, that the record probably came out three weeks ago. The Long Play Listening Party episode probably came out two weeks ago. Uh, but Christina Graves, Finding My Footing, we talked to her and Brandon. Um, and it's a very cool uh, singer-songwriter style record, but with a lot yeah. of just amazing production and uh, a lot of You'll love it. choices. Nate, are you on that record? Is that what you were saying? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I okay. wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just misheard you. <laughs> no, I'll definitely good. check that record out, man. That sounds great. Yeah, it was a fun record to listen to um, and talk about. Cool. Uh, because I wanted to like give a shout to like what I've been listening to, and maybe you guys can get them on the show. But um, sure, do it. But yeah, I just uh, I just got a like a call like we did a FaceTime with my homie Tyler Anderson, who used to be like, yeah 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 oh, Earthy Babes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. trumpet player from architect. You know, he's a sick songwriter, and uh, yeah, like him and you know him and Justin Ripley, been working on a lot of Earthy Babe stuff. And I'm I don't know if you guys have talked to him, but you should because they just Mm-mm. finished this new. I mean, they're insanely prolific. Like, it's bonkers. Like, I feel like right when the pandemic started, they sent me a new record, and I got way into it because it was like really hitting me. Like, as far as just being alone like in my apartment and shit and uh then they that was whatever 10 
months ago, 11 months ago, and they have a new album, and it's, like, even crazier. It's, like, even <laughs> bigger. It's, like, insanely good. It's not out yet, but they sent me a link yesterday. I, I like, listened through it probably, like, four... I was up all night listening <laughs> through it, like, over and over in the headphones. I just, it's another headphone, like, banger, and it bangs on the, the on the real speakers, too, obviously, but, but yeah, Justin's <laughs> such a sick... Um, studio engineer it's 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 like something to aspire it's something to like behold the mixing on this record like like the shit we pulled off we were like kids and these records sound great but this is like a mature like what we would do now this is what sound it's like it's like mind-blowing you know it's like (laughs) the shit that the way he separates all the little tiny little intricacies and like you know it's like i think we came at like these records kind of from, or I was coming at it from a hip hop perspective, like here's some beats and some lyrics and then Jarrett like expanded it. But, but these Mm -hmm. two guys, man, they have a very much like a dialed in band ethos and sound. And like, it was really, really expressed on this new one. It's like, they nailed it, you know? So you got to get them on the horn. Um, but it's the, it's all I've been listening to the last like couple of days. Um, but anyway, I just want to give them a shout. They're from Lawrence. What up? LFK. Um, wait, is that yeah. out now or is that just sent no, to you? Right now? They just sent it to me to get it, some feedback, but it's like their most recent one just came out not even a year ago, you know, so you can get on there. What's that one called? For, it's, uh, their band's called, um, Earthy Babes and, uh, the last one is, I can't remember the name of the album right now, but, but, um, anyway, they're all amazing. All their records are sick. And, uh, those guys are the Casey Lawrence fam as well. So got to get them on the horn. <laughs> it's like, it's funny. It's like, they're like asking me, like, who do we send this shit to? It's done now. Like, that's always like the most perplexing question. It's like, I don't fucking know anyone in the industry (laughs) like i literally like i still talk to my friends like i have a couple friends that are more into like a hip-hop like world in the industry but as far as like rock and roll i have no idea but i don't know you guys should talk to them and get them a little exposure if nothing else you know (laughs) cool nice yeah they're good, good peeps but yeah, yeah dude, shitload um, of music on their Bandcamp already, man. Yeah, I know. They I was have, looking at that. all their <laughs> all their records are is so well done. It's like like they live together now too, you know. So that's kind of like that's like kind of what me and you guys were dealing with, you know. Like it was like, oh well, we have this space we can just keep create. When you have that, it's like and it's like endless possibilities, you know. But especially like pandemic. Like, if I had one person to throw ideas off, I'd probably have, like, twice as many songs done. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's cool Zooming and shit, but it's just not the same, right? Like, if you have, like, right. if you're in a space with someone, like, vamping, it's like, well, that, that's what it's about. For real. You know? But For sure. Soon, once we can, well, maybe once we can travel again, we can all hang out <laughs> oh there's some good news uh, yeah. today so may you know maybe later this year maybe uh, yeah. late summer fall hopefully yeah what's what's going yeah, on man, with that? I hope so oh well uh uh the president bought a bunch of vaccines said there'd be enough vaccines for everybody by the end of july amen so but we're not a news mm-hmm. show we're a music show <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last, uh, you can cut Cut that out. No, no, we'll leave it in. It's fine. But uh, yeah, sorry, sorry for all the editing. We, uh, how we? <laughs> no, there's, there's no editing. We just leave it all in. It's totally fine. But uh, <laughs> picked up some records recently. Okay, we're getting Jared's yeah, records. Has been listening to. Well, let's see. This is just some vinyl I picked up in the last week or two. But I will say, man, um, on the Lawrence tip, I would like to hear Osterali's interview. <laughs> episode uh, one. And I would like to episode hear episode one, Jared. Go uh, back. Episode one, Jared. Yeah, <laughs> I, I gotta catch up then. My bad. Good job, boys. And I need to hear an Andrew Morgan episode and an Aprilicious episode. Right. Yeah, I mean we've got yeah. There's uh, there's no shortage of um, of ideas. 
Let's see here. All right, this is all national stuff. Aaron Frazier, some beautiful soul stuff. He's a drummer of the uh, Indications, Duran Jones okay. and the Indications. Beautiful, beautiful soul record. Uh, the new Arlo Parks, beautiful, beautiful voice, amazing production. Reminds me of your production, Nez, quite a bit. <laughs> and this awesome funk reissue, Caesar Frazier, Hail Caesar, breaks on breaks on breaks. <laughs> And this might be one of my albums of the year. Have you guys heard um, Little Barry and Malcolm Cotto yet? No. Quarter Mass 7? No, not yet. No, not yet. Definitely, definitely recommend this. It's like psychedelic uh, breakbeat blues. Okay. Just beautiful stuff. Very cool. Thanks for letting me share some records from the store. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank, no, thanks, no, thanks for so sharing. Is there, yeah. is there anything we didn't... Uh, touch on between with flying colors and cool fire control. Anything we left out? Pretty much got it all, man. There was a lot of uh, there was a lot of things happening during that period. So I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad we got to eventually get it out. Like you know, like that was just that was just the golden era as far as just being able to collaborate with friends and have the space thanks to like Jared's vision and you know it was like all all due to mixtape that we got to pull off some of those albums like same with like Red Wedding that archetype the last archetype record was like very much a mixtape like concoction that it was like kind of like a continuation of Bleed For Them recordings that then like we got Jared and and like just some live like Tyler Anderson and just some heads that we were like, well, how do we integrate it into the beats, you know? And that was so yeah, like definitely check out like the archetype Red Wedding and and all the like Blackout Gorgeous and all that shit because it's all kind of like a continuation of these records. It's just like a different mm. whatever like setting or vibe or whatever, but. But yeah, man, there's a lot of shit that we did that to, like <laughs> some of my favorite stuff wasn't even our stuff, it was the rooftop vigilantes. And uh I I just was reading some shit from like a few years ago. They like released some more their what was the third album, that Real Pony Glue or whatever? Uh, what was that record that they did? Did they do that at your spot? Oh well we did it with um with an outside engineer, and then I ended up mixing it um, at the end. So that, that they yeah. released an album after that. So I don't know if it's in order of how they released it. I didn't know they actually. I didn't know it was out. To be honest with you, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, it was just that era, man. I I, I really <laughs> appreciate you, man, because that we couldn't have pulled off any of those records. I'm sure there's probably like hundreds of musicians that feel the same way. But dude, you you helped like push our limits as musicians and i really thank you for you specifically man for that like uh, well, your yeah. sweetheart to say that man right back at you man <laughs> oh yeah that's about it that i think perfect summary <laughs> uh everybody you can hear it on bandcamp nesbeat nesbeat dot com. that's n-e-z b-e-a-t dot bandcamp.com cool fire control and with flying colors, the twin albums, also mm -hmm. wherever you stream your music, yeah. of course. Yeah. And uh, thanks, Jared. Thanks, Nez. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you all. See you later. All right. Much love, y'all. Peace. Peace. Bye.